So if I look at, if I look at, um, I go back through oh, this. Oh, no, oh, no sorry. Wait, wait to start pressing, okay. close the door. Okay. Okay. Oh, there's the outside door. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lois Anderson was with Olga Corker now? I didn't realize that. Yeah. Me having a conversation about it, I assume you definitely liked it more than I did. Uh, how do you know? Because <laughs> I really, really didn't like it. Oh, okay. Then yes, perhaps. Again, maybe it's because of the nature of the Biennale that it, it's more about the experience than about the art. You know, I haven't had the, the opportunity to visit a lot of other Biennales around the world. Mm -hmm. From what I've read, um, it is. It, it sounds like it's a lot about the experience. You know, like certain artists are showcased. But that it, it's you know it's a lot about the venue where it's happening, who's there, um, you know how they're how they're working with, you know with the buildings that are there and that type of thing. Um, I think that there's this idea of leaving a trace that I that, that that I thought was interesting. I think the artists that again the ones that that made work for the space, uh, like the rolling the dice and having it on, uh, you know that the, the dice were inked. Uh, the artists that did the. And I don't even know again who that artist was. Yes. I kind of like that that work. Okay. Um, like if we got into specific some of the, some of the specific artists. Mm -hmm. So definitely can there's one picture of. Yeah. yeah that's a the, mm -hmm. You're right about those images. I, I did like those. Mm -hmm. um, but but they were so um, again that the space didn't allow us I thought to really in appreciate the quality mm -hmm. of those images. I think they were on a, a, a lit table box. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you really had to kind of go up and they were quite small and it was just this huge basement room. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and there were the other ones, the, the uh, black light room, which was just a horrible way of seeing them. And then the other ones with the fluorescent lights in the in right in front of them. So I don't even think I made it into that okay. room. Okay. Which I think all part of the same room. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, again, like I didn't, there was, I didn't, I just, mm -hmm. I saw the video and I saw that. Mm -hmm. The dice, it wasn't this guy. It wasn't the guy who had the two films. Okay. It was, this This, this artist had made made it specifically for, um, it was specifically for the building. Mm -hmm. And they they rolled, the, they, they, they inked the dice and they rolled the dice. Mm -hmm. She, he. Um, and that they, it made traces on the ground. And then what they did was they used a, a reflection and they reflected it back up onto the, so there's this kind of mirroring up onto the wall, and then they mirrored it up onto this uh, archway that, that was in the stairwell. So it almost had a kind of sky quality. It was kind of looking up into the heavens. And the dice all looked kind of like stars and constellations there. And that they it made a kind of shape. I don't know, there was something. I missed that entirely. Yeah, so that was as you were walking up to the first floor, I think. And, and around the motorcycle route. Maybe you got caught up in the motorcycle thing, and this was sort of as you turned the corner mm -hmm. into that space, I think. Um, I thought that there was something that that type of work worked effectively in that space. I mentioned Nadia Mir's work. Mm -hmm. I thought that I spent, I probably the one of the places I spent the most time was in that room, mm -hmm. exploring what people had done. Um, yeah, no, there, there's one thing that I meant to do that I completely forgot about is that with her star project and so on, there's another artist who is, I saw 10 years ago, who's got a star project as well. And I got mm -hmm. to go look up her name. It was the first time, the first time I was a power plant and they had her and I thought she was a phenomenal artist. But yeah, I got to look that up as opposed to. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Who else? I thought that um, there was, um, you know, that, that John Bach, I think it was, that created that really uncomfortable mouse. Like, it felt like you were a mouse in a lab, in a, in a lab experiment. And he, he, he took a couple of rooms and built, you know, he built sort of a, an inclined yep. floor. And there was like these kind of crappy, it was sort of this, this play on uh, very soulless um, professional yes. office spaces. Mm -hmm. And that he actually had some dead mice in there. I mean, I think there were some extreme elements in there. He had some rotten food laying out on the table yes. in one mm -hmm. room. And, but it, there was, um, I don't know, there was something, There was. I, I felt that there was something at least interesting going on there where you had to kind of walk through. And as you moved through the space, you got more and more uncomfortable. You could kind of c crawl down into this cubbyhole space and you felt like you were going to be guillotined at one point because there was this 
this, you know, this, <clears throat> you had to kind of walk yeah. through a wall. Um, yeah, I thought that, I thought that was Sylvie, Sylvie Coton. No. See, Sylvie Coton was once, there was that yeah. room with the confetti, mm -hmm. and right next to her was this, yeah, was, I know, there it's, it's was sure. John Boxworth. Okay, because there's the sort of thing where I was looking at tags, and I have, yet yeah, deconstructed rooms, uh, and then I had seen a tag for Sylvie Coton, I thought hers was part of that same thing. Not realizing no. it was separate. Okay. Yeah. And I actually thought, like, Sylvie Coton, I think, is an interesting artist. I, I actually thought that her piece, uh, I didn't see, uh, except for the confetti, which actually mm -hmm. I think was done. And, and I like, I kind of like that idea. Mm -hmm. But the other elements she had in the room, which, as I understood it, were uh, aspects of other installations and other pieces, I just, I didn't understand what they were doing there at all. Um, and I didn't see the value mm -hmm. of, of them being there, personally. Um, Another, um, you know, I thought that the Kozik, some of the Kozik stuff was interesting. Um, you know, the folded pieces of paper where yeah. they, so there's, there's, there's this one room, they had two huge pieces of paper yeah. that they had to kind of fold and put yeah. on a... I said, black. You didn't like that? Well, I didn't find the, the I mean, the, the, the remnants, there's this as aspect of remnants because a lot of how they worked, like there was the finding the dead mouse and making a shrine, there was a remnant component. They found these uh, old car pieces of cardboard, you know, that you carry your coffee in and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And they realized that they all had this little face, you know, these two eyes and a nose and a mouth. And then they, they kind of put them up on the wall like mm -hmm. masks, right? There's this kind of yeah. totemic component mm -hmm. to it. Um, I mean, I just, again, like, uh, I did think that that, out of all the artists, was, was perhaps a little, you know, that was more interesting to okay. me. Okay, to me, it's sort of thing, once you start just accumulating pedestrian objects, that does not necessarily make art. Mm. It's the sort of thing where, yeah, like the, uh, what was it, the styrofoam insulation blobs yeah. that they use. Right. Saying, I have that in my house. <laughs> At which point, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't speak of art to me. Mm. And at which point, I just sort of turn around and go someplace else. Well, what, again, and this was the expl mm -hmm. explanation by one of the young women, which was they they in, they injected into a walnut, I think, mm -hmm. this, this um, what was it, that it's like a, a filler yep. that you use in construction, and that it would make the walnut explode, and that there was, you know, just like, um, there was kind of this chance inception. And I think it was a play on each of us as humans in the idea of, of, of inception, you know, like mm -hmm. where we, how it's all a question of chance. And you know how two things come together, and then all of a sudden it creates. You know the result of it is just very unpredictable. Mm -hmm. um, and whether that worked as an art piece, I think as, a, as I think conceptually yeah. they're quite strong. I think that sometimes what happens is, um, and where where I think artists have problems at times is between the concept and the idea, and how that gets translated, and then what the what the what the remnants of that are, and how people can connect or not to that. Mm -hmm. I think that's where sometimes they run, run into yeah. problems. I thought the walnut thing was, for me, less powerful mm -hmm. than um, than the mask, for example, there, or the, the found objects. You like the color, yes. color coding. Um, and there was an element I thought was interesting in that. For me personally, that, that didn't capture my imagination it as just, well. It just set me off and said, okay, yeah, I can understand. And it, had I had the time and the interest, would have actually tried to decode them all myself and see if they were actually spelling the right things and so on. But just, yeah. to me, it just was something that was thought out and presented well. Right. And the other ones, which might have been thought out but weren't ter weren't presented terribly well to my mind. Right. No, that's true. And mm -hmm. it sounded like that was an ongoing piece that every week they would send in. Um, every week they would send in a code, mm -hmm. and that they that would be put up, and then you'd have to kind of piece it mm -hmm. together. Um, I kind of liked. Um, what else did I like? There was, um, there was, I think it's Jean Dubois. Mm -hmm. You see the Derrida guy? Yeah. Where uh, there was that closed room where he, there is, yeah. The dice the, and, the, and the blowing thing. The blowing. <laughs> so it was a dark room. Mm -hmm. So if we, and it was, it was a blowing thing. So it was this little, kind of like a little wind. Uh, yeah. uh, what's wrong and, and the technical term is, Anomometer. It, it, um, there's an A N O N M E T R. And it's a, yeah, the, the wind, Jesus. Uh, anomalous. I'm not gonna be able to pronounce. The thing that measures wind speed. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's like a little fan, yes. basically. 
and that you could blow on it. And it would go around, and it was connected to all this lettering. So it was a dark room, and it was connected to all this lettering. And they would have, I think there was about eight or ten different terms that were coined or kind of brought forward by Jacques Derrida in the 80s. And that they, these words would sort of, there were words on the wall, right? And they'd collide. And sometimes in the collision, they would separate. The words would separate, or they would reform. And the the sound effects were also out of video games from the 80s, like the boom, boom, the popping, yes, mm -hmm. bing, and, and that type of thing. There was there was sort of uh, deliberately taken yeah. from sound effects from the 80s, which I presume is when Derrida was writing all this, this mm -hmm. these particular works. Um, there was something about that that I thought, like again, for the interactive component, mm -hmm. I thought it worked well in the space. I thought it was one of the few artists that had used really the entirety of the space. You really felt an experience in there. It was really dark. You, you kind of didn't know what the hell you were doing in there until somebody blew this thing and then all of a sudden mm -hmm. the words would go and then they'd yeah. crash. And, um, See, I'm used to seeing stuff like that on the internet and there's this thing called mm -hmm. the visual thesaurus, which, which won't, uh, connects words very similarly mm -hmm. and to me that blowing aspect why do you need to blow on it so as to make an intro that connection did not make any sense to me whatsoever and it's the sort of thing where okay well, wouldn't it be the chance element like whoever decided to at that particular time mm -hmm. come in if they noticed that you needed to blow on yeah, it, it or a, not it was a tiny yeah, it was tiny and it was no black. no it's also a tiny little thing saying blow on it and the, the, the uh, instructions saying oh, See, thing. I didn't see that. Okay, exactly. It's tiny. Okay. But to me, it's the sort of thing where if you're going to be taking something where you're using the reader's words and making them connect and disconnect, then it doesn't make sense that there'd be blowing to, right. to make it happen. It might be the sort of thing of, okay, let's take up a book and flip through the pages and use that as the method of interactivity. Or uh, take the easy one, roll the, roll the dice, and turn it into interact, use that as the interactivity.